Hey guys, Molan Pabea here and today I'm going to talk to you about how to talk to business owners and get them excited about you buying their business. So let's get to it. So hey guys, my name is Molan Pabea and if you're new to this channel, I'm the founder of acquisitions.com and I'm also a partner in many other holding companies and acquisitions that we did or doing right now. And I'm here to share with you my journey on what's working for me and my clients. And I have some clients who bought one, two, three businesses in less than a year. And that's what I wanna share with you, what's working, what's not working. If you want more A to Z detail, kind of like training about that, see the training, the, the training below this video. We're gonna put some links in the description or something. But either way, today I wanna to talk to you about a very specific topic that I'm getting asked all the time on how you can go out there talk to business owners and get them excited about the opportunity of you buying their business so to begin with for you to understand many people before they even go to talk to business owners they get themselves a board they think that they need a board sometimes you do sometimes you not if it's your first acquisition guys you don't really need a board you just need to go out there talk to business owners because most likely your acquisition is in the one to five million dollar a year range so you don't need big hitters behind you um actually many times it's going to be against you because you're going to Position yourself as someone who was involved in hundreds of billions of dollars of acquisitions because your board members were involved in those deals. And w the only thing that the business owner is going to see in front of his eyes is like, hey, uh, I see dollars, dollars, dollars. Here's my opportunity for an exit. And it can be against you because when you're buying, especially if it's your first deal and you don't know much about the industry and you're not even sure who's going to run the business for you, unless it's going to be you and perhaps you don't even have an experience about that industry. The last thing you want is to get a business owner excited about just making millions of dollars from you and getting a premium price from you. And then he's just going to think about, cool, how can I make the most amount of money from those buyers, from you, and run away from this business as much as possible, as fast as I can before they find out that it's a shitty business, right? That's the last thing you want. You want a seller, a business owner who's actually going to have some skin in the game, ideally, and actually have a reason to help you in the, at least in the transition period after the deal to make sure that the deal isn't getting screwed. Because if you promised to pay him whatever the price, a few million dollars for his business, and then he's running away after you just signed the deal and you just getting stuck there uh, with the liability of paying the seller who's not with you anymore and you most likely never ran a business like that or don't even want to run a business like that in an ideal world you want someone else to run that for you but you don't know anything about the sector you just messed so many things up just because you didn't have the right fundamentals and the right positioning to begin with you didn't know how to position yourself as someone who's actually going to have some kind of a joint venture with the seller that's going to be a win-win for everyone because in the end of the day guys we are here to provide value and provide solutions for the other side if there's no win-win for the for both sides there is a triangle of drama i think something like that where if you don't start the relationship with someone on the right pace where you're both on the same level and there's a win-win for both sides the, the way for that to go down is very very fast and i'm telling you that because i saw horror stories and i keep mentioning that in all of my videos that People just getting excited about buying a business. They're like, hey, I have all those savings. I have hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings in my bank account. Let's just throw them into that seller and the seller is running away and you already paid him many times all of the money. And now you're stuck with a business that you don't even know what to do with. You don't even know what it's worth. You don't even know that if what you paid is even worth that amount and you're just getting fucked very, very fast. So that's the last thing I want for you, right? And Another big problem that I see with people when they go out there and try to talk to business owners is they, they just talk about themselves. They're just like, this is me. This is what I've done. This is what I plan to do. Here are my board. This is what my board did. Uh, we all made billions of dollars of acquisitions and this is who we are. This is why we're the best. This is why you should sell their business right now. And it's very, very dangerous when you're just talking about yourself. I, I, I never found anything good that's happened with that. And in my opinion, it's not even a good way to sell yourself. The best way to sell something, in my opinion, is not very pushy and aggressive and like, hey, here's we, here we are, here's why we're the best. No, it's actually about asking more questions and listening more. We have two ears, so we can listen. Uh, what's the sentence says? We got two ears and one mouth, so we can listen. So it means we need to listen at least double than what we talk. And I think with sales and us buying a business is a sales process. It's a sales process 
more than anything because we are selling ourselves on why we are the best opportunity for that seller to sell his business to us. Hence, why if you're not asking more questions than you're talking about yourself, you're doing something wrong. And if you don't know what questions to ask to position yourself the right way, you're probably making mistakes. And again, making yourself look like someone who's perhaps isn't even you. Like most people who message me, they never bought a business before. And now they go and talk to those business owners with their three-piece suit. And they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm this big and I'm this boss and I can pay you billions of dollars. And there's incongruency in the way that you talk and the way that the business owner is looking at you. And trust me, those business owners, they're not suckers. They're, they're, some of them own their businesses for 20, 30 years. If you don't know how to position yourself right in a way that is honest and, and transparent, it just won't work. You need to go out there and figure out what are their needs, what are their problems, and really find out if, if and how you can help them. And if you can't help them with their problems, perhaps you don't need to be in that deal and you need to skip and move to the next one. That's the way that you should look at business, in my opinion, and just in, in life, in relationships, in life in general. You need to be out there, figure out, hey, what's the other side want? Can I help you? Let's figure out if I can help you based on the questions that I'm asking you. And based on the answer that you give me back, and where you at and where you want to be, let me figure out if and how I can help you. And if I can help you, I'll tell you what I got to offer. And here's the best offer that I can give you for your business. And I hope that it's not just giving you X value for your business. It's also providing you solutions for who you are as a person and what you want, not just for your business, but for your own personal goal as the seller of that business. So that's the vibe that you, should, you gotta have when you're talking to those business owners. I hope that makes sense. And I'm gonna expand on that a little bit more in a bit. Another problem that I see with people trying to buy a business is that they already have a business in that sector and now they're going to a competitor or a complementary business in that sector. And they're, they're really screwing themselves because they, as soon as they come to a second business in that sector, they are a competitor. And you need to be really, really careful in the way that you position yourself when you talk to those business owners, your competitor, um, in a way that is, is safe. because. Think about yourself, if you have a business in a sector and then your competitor is coming to you and he's like, hey, I wanna buy your business, you're gonna be really, really careful in terms of the kind of information that you're giving him, right? And I'm telling you that because I, I heard many stories about potential buyers who act as if they're coming to buy a company and then they agree on a deal, they're getting into due diligence and whenever the seller is giving them all the information about their business, they're still in employees, they're still in customers and the seller, the business owner who thought he's going to sell the business and make millions of dollars for an exit, find themselves with no business, with actually a business that he had to bankrupt and, and, and liquidate just because the competitor stole all of their clients, all of their employees, uh, because they had access to it all. That's why you need to be really, really careful in the way that you position yourself as the, as the buyer. You got to do whatever it takes to position yourself as the safe pair of hand. Otherwise, a competitor will be really, really careful. And if he's not careful, he's doing a mistake. Because I'm telling you, there are those stories all the time, especially with big buyers who don't really care about who you are as a small business. All they care about is just growing faster and meeting their shareholder demands in terms of growth of buying more revenues. So in the end of the day, doing deals and being comfortable and approaching business owners all comes down to knowing how to position yourself right and knowing how to be there to add value and meet their needs and find out what they need, what is their problem and how you can solve their problems with your value, which can be money or 900, uh, nine different structures that I'm telling my clients on how you can do those deals with no money down of their own which can be lots of different financial engineering structures or negotiating negotiation strategies with the seller of the business. And if you want to learn more about that on how my clients are buying businesses every day and I have clients who bought three businesses in less than a year, I'm talking multi seven figure businesses with management team in place without using their own money. And heck, all you need is one good deal to really change your life. And that's what I want to share with you. So see the links below this video for its free training that I'm hosting on how you can do it A to Z and how my clients are doing that. And I hope you got some value here. Remember guys, it's about the other side. It's about adding value. It's about listening to their problems and finding out the win-win scenarios for both of you. So I hope you got some value. If you did, please like and, and share this video and comment below. Let me know what you think, even if you hate this video. I wanna know what you're thinking. And if you didn't yet, subscribe to the channel to make sure that you're not missing any new videos because I'm trying to post as much as I can and add value to you and share with you lessons that I wish someone shared with me when I started. So I hope you got some value and enjoyed and I'll see you soon.